You like movies, right? Well, let's talk about movies for a second. Hey everybody, how's it going? It's me, the world's okayest movie critic, Izzy Nobri. This, by the way, the Izzy Nobri Show. Okay, so by now, everybody knows that Josh Trank's Fantastic Four was fantastic garbage. It's orbiting at around between 9 and 10% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. And yes, I know that movie critics are sometimes unduly harsh on some movies, especially these superhero pictures. They're not supposed to be Citizen Kane, and I, I get it. You can't just go by Rotten Tomatoes all the time. But just to put things in perspective, that's lower than Batman and Robin. That's lower than Daredevil. That's on par with Catwoman. People are not exaggerating when they're saying this movie is terrible. And the score is bound to go down a few more notches as more critics watch the movie and give it awful reviews. Josh Trank, what the f*** happened, buddy? Now, Josh Trank is a relative newcomer. His first movie was 2012's Chronicle, which is was a really good take. It was kind of like a quasi-superhero, sci-fi, Twilight zone kind of movie. I thought it was really good. I watched it in theaters. I thought it was well worth the price of admission. And when they said that he was directing Fantastic Four, I actually got pretty excited. Fox has done awful work with the Fantastic Four property. So just a quick recap for some people who are not in the know. Back in the 90s, Marvel was basically bankrupt and they started selling off the rights to some of their properties like the X-Men and Spider-Man and Daredevil, Fantastic Four, to major studios because they figured, let's we're never gonna make a movie out of this. Let's sell it to other studios so that they can make a movie off of this and we'll have money to keep the lights on here. Seemed like a good idea at the time. What we didn't know is that Marvel would eventually become a studio themselves and bring far better quality with the source material not coincidentally, they write the material. And in retrospect, it was a terrible idea to have their IP spread across several different owners, like is what we have now. Look at what happens with DC on the other hand, right? Like Warner is the only studio making movies with DC properties and they can't even put together a decent movie, but that's a different, completely different subject. So back to Fantastic Four. So Josh Trank got attached to direct the picture. I was pretty excited. Like I said, I liked Chronicle a lot. I thought it was a really fresh take on the whole, you know, what if superheroes really existed? It was really grounded. I thought it was a really good movie. However, it might seem that the success of Chronicle is more due to everybody else that was involved in the picture than Josh Trank himself. There were some rumors of erratic behavior, apparently he was showing up to set f***ed up on something. There were some claims there was prescription medication, some people were saying that he was partying too hard. A lot of times, according to the rumors, he didn't show up to direct the, the picture, so other, like, uh, the director of photography and his assistants had to kind of, like, keep the show going. So he had all those rumors about Trank misbehaving on the set. The studio also put an embargo on reviews. Basically what that means is that critics would not see the movie in advance and would have to wait to watch like everybody else. That's never a good sign. When studios are trying to prevent critics from doing their job, that is usually indicative of some f***ery happening when it comes to the quality of the movie. Like the studio knows the movie's gonna bomb and usually they don't, they try to cut their losses, they don't advertise the movie so much because a lot of the movie production cost comes from advertising, from marketing of the movie itself. So when a movie comes out and it's a little bit under the radar, at least considering it's blockbustery status and there's an embargo on reviews, you can rest assured the movie's gonna be shit. So the movie comes out and it turns out it was shit. So the rumors that we heard are now being confirmed by people who are close to the movie. Now, it's it's well known that Josh Trank shit the bed during production of this movie. Josh Trank was quiet for a while while the bad reviews came pouring in. At one point, he did post out a tweet basically blaming the studio for what's called executive meddling. That's when the director has a vision, but the studio is constantly trying to, to gear the movie to another direction. And when that clash happens, very seldom do we get a quality product, one that comes to mind is the infamous Alien 3. That caused David Fincher to walk out of the movie. David Fincher or David Lynch? I always confuse these f two. Usually when we have a creative clash like that, it's never, it never makes for a decent movie. Infamously, we had the one that comes to mind whenever we think about executive meddling was Alien 3. It was David Fincher's first picture 
Fox, again, f***ing Fox, was so... They wanted to change the movie so much that Fincher said, f*** it, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. He rage quit his own movie, his directorial debut. He just walked out. Somebody else had to finish it. Review embargo, Josh Trink apparently just being an asshole on set posted a tweet blaming the studio, then deleted it. At some point, Josh Trank had been attached to one of these Disney Star Wars spin-off movies. He got detached from that pretty quick. Everybody knew it had to do with Fantastic Four. So yeah, the movie apparently fucking sucks. People are saying it's on par with Batman and Robin. It's... Jesus Christ! How do you fuck a movie up that bad? All reviewers are saying basically the same thing. We thought we were all past the, the time of like really, really crappy superhero movies. Every now and again, there's a Green Lantern, which by the way, still technically better than Fantastic Four. But we all thought that by now, after like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and like, you know, Men of Steel wasn't that great, but it wasn't Catwoman level. So it, it came as a surprise to everybody that in 2015 we're still making such terrible superhero movies. Which brings me to my next point. Why is Fox still holding on to Fantastic Four? I know they're a huge, huge property in the comics. They were the first superhero family. They're a, a huge name, but if you think about it, Fox did nothing but screw up that intellectual property way back in the 90s when they... Okay, this is how incompetent Fox has been with the Fantastic Four property. They bought the, the rights from Marvel back in the 90s and they sat on it. They did nothing with it. And the way these things work is that if the studio does nothing with the property, in five years, the rights revert back to the original owner, in this case, Marvel. That was basically the terms of the contract. So by 1994, the deadline was approaching fast and Fox did what I did when I was back in school. They did the laziest work they could possibly do just to have something to show. They hired George Corman, who was famous for doing like B-type productions, and they just said, okay, here's the money, it wasn't much for a budget, just do anything with these characters. They, we're not even gonna release this, it's, it wasn't even meant for theaters. It was just so that they had something so that they could still legally hold on to the Fantastic Four movie rights. So then they did another Fantastic Four picture, and another, at this point, three terrible movies. Fox gave up on Daredevil after the first crappy movie. For some reason, they just really didn't want to let go of the Fantastic Four property. So they put another one out and it's the worst of the bunch. And now you have to wonder, will Fox finally just give it up? Will they pull a Sony and offer Marvel to come in, use the characters, but just to prop them up in their cinematic universe, but still maintain the option to do standalone Fantastic Four movies? I think it's very fair to, to, to assume that they are done with Fantastic Four, with the Fantastic Four franchise. It would not surprise me if they just did what they did with Daredevil and just said, you know what, f*** it, give it back to them. Because they know what they're doing with it. I mean, f***ing Marvel can make a good movie based on a guy that talks to ants. Fox keeps screwing up big tentpole characters like Daredevil. I mean, they screwed that up once, but Fantastic Four, four times, man. Four times. And listen, I said this on Twitter and a lot of people are like, You know, it's unfair to count 1994's Fantastic Four because, you know, they that wasn't supposed to be really a movie. That was just like a legal thing. They're just... No, I think that proves my point that they never knew what to do with the property. They bought it. They were just hedging their bet that maybe superhero movies are going to be the next big thing. And then... When the time came that they absolutely needed to put a movie out, they did one almost out of spite when you think about it. That proves my point. They shouldn't have that property to begin with. They did nothing good with it. But that's what I think. What do you think about the latest Fantastic Four movie? What happens with Josh Trank's career? Now, man, the guy had such promise. Chronicle was pretty good, but again, how much of that was due to his competency as a director and how much of that was just he was surrounded with more talented people? That's the George Lucas syndrome right there. Anyways, comments down below, tell me what you think, subscribe to the channel, and make it easy again. Just, just click this thing here, this, this thing right here. See what I did there? Click it. I'm running out of battery, click it! And that's everything for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done. Honestly, I, I'm just glad I'm not a Fantastic Four fan. I would be pissed! <laughs>